Greetings, everyone. Welcome back to Blade Bias. Today, we will be talking about my time with the Remshi Design Shino. Before the video begins, Remshi sent this out on loan for the purpose of this video. Any and all opinions are my own. Remshi is a good friend of mine. Keep that in mind as I give my opinions. Um, but, you know, he didn't tell me to say anything. We have barely talked since I got the thing. Sorry, Remshi. Um, and yeah, he sent it over on loan so I could try it out. Thank you, by the way, Remshi. Really appreciate it. So, without further ado, gosh, I lost my train of thought there. Let's talk about my time with the Shino. I see the Shino as one thing. Well, multiple things, but mainly one thing. This is Remshi's attempt to standardize his design. A lot of his designs come from the same design language. That Kuno, that big blade and those weird dimensions and everything like that. The Shino is the attempt to appeal to someone who's less about personality in a ballad song, like I am, and more about performance in a ballad song. Someone who just wants to flip their Kraken trainer because it does what they want it to do when they want it to do it. And I don't think I could describe the Kuno as that, Remshi's original design. The Kuno was a vastly unique, fun flipper. Very floaty, very long, very light. It delivered an experience that no other Balasong could. And while that was extremely appealing to some people, it wasn't super appealing to the more performance-oriented crowd. So the Shino is an attempt, at least the way that I see it, to appeal to those people who like the design language but want more standard performance in their Balasongs. Something that feels a little bit more normal compared to other flippers. And I think that Remshi has partially succeeded in that. I do think he has succeeded, but not entirely. Because I have one big, yet also small, ironically, problem with the Shino. And we will get into that in just a bit. But first, let's kind of just go over kind of how it flips. This, as a standardization, like I mentioned, of Remshi's lineup, flips quite well, I think. Zero Gs, rollovers are sticky enough, it scissors great, it aerials great, it's predictable. Fans feel okay, choker fans feel okay. It does really whatever I want it to do, and it's agile enough and a standard weight enough that I can do them with ease. I actually really enjoy flipping the Shino a majority of the time. Again, we'll get into that later. The design is great. I love this little karambit hole that you can use to spin the thing around if you have small enough fingers, which I do, and it's properly chamfered on the inside so that doesn't cut you. The overall design is comfortable, um, certainly more comfortable than the one he brought to Blade Show, less square, less boxy, and with these shorter handles, which ironically is my big yet physically small problem with the Shino. You see, when I flip the Shino, 90% of the time, I'm having a great time. I'm really enjoying it. But 10% of the time, it just does something that I don't expect that ends with me being a little frustrated, whether it flies off or the choker fan just stops dead in its tracks or something happens that I'm not expecting. And while it doesn't happen enough for me to completely write the Shino off, it does happen enough that I am noticeably frustrated when it happens and if it happens too much over a shorter period of time, I will leave my session with the, with the Shino feeling frustrated, genuinely. And again, while it's not all the time and it's not enough for me to say that this thing isn't worth it or this thing sucks, it's still just a little annoying and certainly annoying enough to drop this thing down by a point easily. If we were going on a 10-point scale, which I don't like to do, but I'm going to do now for the sake of... Um, visualizing my point, if I were to give this thing a 10-point scale rating, it would be like a 7.5. It's above average. It's fun. Does it beat out some of my favorite performers, things like the Serif Slif T trainer? No. But is it a really, really fun trainer that has a unique enough profile to keep me interested while still having enough performance to keep the more hardcore audience interested? Yes, I think so. But those lit... Those 10% of the times where it just does something unexpected, drop it down to a six and a half for me easily. Still above average, but just frustrating enough 
to sour my experience just a tiny bit. And all of that problem comes down to the fact that this blade is longer than these handles. The tip goes to the end of the handles and the Zen nipple extends far beyond. And if we compare this to a more standard battle song, something like the wing, you put them next to each other and you go, oh, they're a similar length. I mean, sure, the, the Shino is a little bit bigger, but that's kind of what Remshi is known for. Until you look at the fact that most of the difference here is in these handles. These handles are a good pivot radius above where they are in the Shino. And the problem with battle songs is that they are a pendulum, as Will has talked about ad nauseum in his videos. The more weight you have, the further away from the pivot point of something that swings, the more momentum it will generate. The problem with the Shino is that not only is there not a ton of weight down here, something that hopefully will be fixed with Remshi's planned swappable weight system, but these, this lower weight is also closer to the pivots than it otherwise would be. And when you combine that with an abnormally long blade, half of the time that I flip the Shino, I just find myself missing that little bit of handle length that would go a long way into helping me generate momentum to help fix these little slip-ups that the Shino is having. And one big thing that I notice with the shorter handles is choker fans. I run out of handle length on choker fans all the time where I will just go for a choker fan, no handle left, it falls on the ground. It's happened a few times in this video already. But those 10% those of times where I'm just missing something, where it just kind of flies out, is because it's not, there's just not enough momentum in the handles for me because they're so short and there's so little weight here. This is something that I think like, if we get like a zippy, like a, it's kind of like the Sasori. I see it almost as very similar to the Sasori. If it just had that little bit of extra weight, you get like a zippy extension weight or something like that. I think this thing would be fantastic in my eyes. But the way that it sits right now, the handles are so short that I find myself actively wishing they were longer so that I could get a little bit more momentum out of them so that it didn't fly off 10% of the time, so that it actually did what I wanted it to do when I wanted it to do it. And again, while it's not a deal breaker, I still do enjoy the Shino. I still do think it's an above average trainer. It's enough to sour the experience just a little bit, which is super sad because I loved this thing at Blade Show, and one of the changes that Remshi made was shortening the handles a little bit. If you ask me, I really wish we could have had these dimension changes without the length change, because this thing would have probably gone down as one of my favorite trainers currently available in the price range, assuming we get a price range like a confirmed, not a price range, assuming we get a confirmed price, because the way it is right now, until I have a confirmed price, I'm kind of at a loss for words if I would buy one or not. It's a really tough thing. Would I buy one at $500? Probably not. Would I buy one at, I don't know, $350 or $400? Maybe, but we don't know what the price is going to be. Those are all speculation. I don't have an exact price. I don't have any inside info on that. I'm sorry. So the Shino just ends up in a really weird spot where I really like it most of the time. But if I get unlucky enough, if I'm not good enough that day, if my skill issues are fighting against me just enough, it creates an experience where I do actively get a little frustrated with flipping it. And I just want to go to something else. Something that has that extra length, something that has that extra weight to it, something that has that momentum to it. So I think that's where I stand on the Shino. Um, that's just my personal preference. Some people might really like these shorter handles and longer blade, because that's the other thing. The blade is so long that it even exacerbates the short handles even more. Especially in things like fans. Sometimes I just can't get the handles to kick out with enough momentum to actually get a good fan going. Um, but that's just me. Your mileage may vary. Some people might really like this more... I wouldn't even call it a blade biased experience though. It it definitely still has a hint of handle bias to it, but it's like a weird handle bias. I don't know, man. Um, but some people might really enjoy this experience. More power to you if you do. 
I'm like partially one of you. Cause again, I really like this thing on some days and some days I'm a little frustrated with this thing. So yeah, that's where it stands. Huge thank you again to Remshi for sending this thing out for me to test out. I really appreciate it. It's been a lot of fun. Um, I'm cautiously optimistic to see where it goes because I think with even just a, like a single change, even just like an aftermarket change, like if Zippy gets his hands on this thing, then dude, we might be in business to, this might be genuinely one of my favorite trainers. And I mean that just, to, oh, just in his zippy extension would be so nice. Or maybe even just heavier weights. I don't know. I genuinely don't know if heavier weights would fix it or if I'm really just missing the handle length. I don't know. That's going to do it for this one. Thank you all for watching. And I'll see you all in the next one. Later.